Hey, yo. I want to do a little bit of live problem solving. So somebody shared this problem the other day and looked at it, but I promise I didn't think about it very much. Um, okay. And the cool thing about lead code is um, that you can switch languages. So I think that the tests uh, are written in a bunch of different languages. Oh, I need to log in or sign up. All right, fine. Uh -huh. All right, hold on. Let me pause the recording here. <clears throat> okay. I got logged in. I'm actually going to switch this to Ruby because <clears throat> I want this to be a phase four kind of example um, as I feel like there's not a lot of good videos about problem solving in Ruby <clears throat> that we're providing. So, you know, the different phases of the problem solving, step one, clarification, it's you have the challenge presented to you in the context of live coding or a technical interview it's not probably going to come in this form. Um, in this form, there's a statement and then there's some examples and the examples are meant to help clarify. So I'm going to spend some time making sure I get this because this description is a little dense. So it's nice to have the, it's nice to have the examples, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is be specific. So for instance, answer one is the number of days you have to wait after the first day to get a warmer temperature. So Answer one, uh, sorry, return and write answer such that answer one is right. So if I'm on the first day and the, the first day is this day, um, I have to wait one day until I get a higher temperature. So that's why this number is one. Um, on the second day, that's this one here. And again, we're sort of using index notation to think about the ith day the second day um i have to wait four days to get a higher temperature one two three four exactly right so so that clarifies the the problem for me i'm going to look at an array so now i'm going to write some pseudocode so look at an array element one at a time i'll note that I am creating a new array based on the size of the first array, which means map might be useful. That's a thought that's occurring to me. Um, so I'm going to move this out of the way because it's not really pseudocode. But I also in my head, I'm thinking, I might try to do it without map and then circle back and do map later. Look at an array, one element at a time. Um, as I look at the first element, I start going forward and checking how far until I get a new element that is bigger than the current element. And this number is stored in my new array and it's possible I will run out of numbers to look at before I find a bigger number, in which case I need to store the number zero. And another note, the last number would consequently always be zero because there are no other numbers to check. It's just a little side point that I'm noticing. Okay, well, I'm going to start with the most basic structure for this, which is my answer could be an empty array and I'm going to loop through temperatures and I'm going to return answer. So at this point, 
I've kind of taken care of some of the low hanging fruit and I'm, now I'm into like, okay, I'm looking at a temperature T and I need to determine based on the next element. And this makes me think um, that I would like the index and I'm going to just do a real quick search on each with index Ruby. And again, this is the kind of thing where some experience is useful because um, if I don't know that with index exists, then I may have to do a search before this. That's like, how do I get the index in, in the middle of an iteration? And actually, I guess I'm thinking um, this is each with index T comma I. Uh, how how did it occur to me? I guess this part, as I look at the first element, I start going forward. So it just strikes me that knowing, for instance, that I'm on the second or index number two element, I would want to know, look like I'm going to start looking at element three, element four, element five. And so that's why the indexing seems like a useful strategy here. So that's what made me think about each with index was like knowing how many, like in, in two ways, if I'm sort of just put me into the middle of an array and I'm like, okay, uh, let me look at the next element. Well, what is the next element? That would be easiest to do if I knew what the index was of the first element and reinforcing the idea that index is useful. Once I find that number that's bigger down the line, I could just subtract the indexes, indices, and then that would tell me how far apart they are. That's what I'm thinking, right? For instance, here, if this is index two, and this is index three, and this is index four, and this is index five, and this is index six, it's six minus four tells me how many times, how many days I had to go forward in order to get this, uh, the higher temperature. Okay, so that kind of explains why I got to thinking about index indexes, indices. All right. Now, what does the code actually look like? So I'm looking at an element one at a time as I look at the first element. So basically I feel like I wanna create a loop. I'm not sure what my looping structure would be, but let's say, um, while I, is, wait a minute, I'm going to build a for loop because for loop Ruby, <clears throat> it's been a while since I thought about it, oh, let me stay away from Geeks Re Geeks tutorials point, W3 resource, that sounds like real documentation, while condition do code. Okay, <clears throat> I guess that's kind of where I started. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's kind of just a while loop. So while <clears throat> let's say n equals five plus one. So while n is less than the temperatures dot length I will puts temperatures in and then I'll do n plus equals one. Let me check the syntax of this. <clears throat> Um, 
Yeah. Okay. While and all right. Um, okay. And see, I'm, now I'm thinking about validation because I'm, I could write more code, but I want to check in with the basic looping. I guess what I would expect to happen here is that when As we're looping through this, I'm going to see the first, then I'm going to see um, the next temperature, then the, then I'll put this temperature, and then again and again. Seventy three, seventy four, seventy three, seventy five, seventy three, seventy one, seventy three, sixty nine. Okay, so I think that's working the way I expected it to work. Uh, okay. So now I need an if statement here. And then I might need to think about break statements, but basically, if temperatures n is greater than t then i'm going to do puts n minus i and then i want to do a break to get out of this loop maybe okay definitely did not like the break there um let's see Maybe I need to add a different conditional. While n is less than the shut length and n temperatures n is greater is less than T, answer, shovel, uh, oh, I'm and that's going to reset in temper uh, n minus i. All right, let's see. <clears throat> okay. Well, that's interesting because it worked as long as there was an answer. So it almost feels like this, and again, I don't know how helpful this is because this was kind of a, a big jump here, what made me write this little line of code, right? I was kind of working on a loop and I was thinking about a condition upon which I would break it. And I mean, in a way, I like the check in. With an input, if x Oh, I don't 
at all. Come back to this. Okay. <clears throat> so, yeah, I'd like to say more at some point about this, but I also want to keep proceeding with the problem. Um, and how do I get to the finish line? I don't know what's better from a learning perspective. Um, so let's go back. Okay, so I got here and I had a syntax error. No, I didn't. Okay, so I got here and I had a syntax error. And basically what I'm thinking is I want the I want this to stop. Um oh, I probably needed an end in there. I don't know if that would work actually. Because every if statement needs um an end. That was a basic syntax problem. Well, the syntax error is done. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So the first time when the temperatures um, temperatures n was greater than t, which is right away because in the very first value, and this this requires a little bit of mental gymnastics, right? As I'm thinking about the the first case scenario, and I'm working through this, the temperature for the for the very first element is 73. So T is 73, I is zero. That means N is one. So while one is less than, well, that's true because temperatures dot length is gonna be however long this is. Then I ask, hey, is temperature one greater than T? So this is moving into this pseudocode, right? Um, and then I'm printing out how far it is. And essentially this is this is the end of the process. So instead of putting it, I could do my array shovel here and say, hey, if it's done, I can break out of it and move on to the next element. The n plus one plus equals one is irrelevant because break ends the loop. So it takes me down to here. So at this point, I should be able to uh, get to the same place that I was when I added the and statement here. If instead of putting this, I just change it to a shovel. So I just say answer. Um, what did I say? N minus I, because that's the, the gap between this. Um, and then if I run it and I, oh, I got to say answer down here. I think I erased that. Wait a minute. While, if, end, do, end, answer is already there. Okay. <clears throat> so at this point I should have the same. Yeah, good. All right. So I've got it matched up into the end. So there's a possibility that n is not less than temperature dot length, which means n is equal to temperature dot length. So then here I could say, the break takes me out of the while loop. So I could say if n is equal to temperatures dot length, then I need to shovel in zero because in that case, we ended up going all the way through the while loop. We never did the, we never hit the break because we never uh, got to this point. So we kept adding one, one, one until we got to the end. And in that case, what we're putting into answer is zero. So in both cases, we should be shoveling something in. So let's see if that works. Accepted. Okay, good. So now this works. Case two worked. Case three worked. Okay, so I could submit this, um, but I don't, but I, I kind of want to play with this code a little bit because it seems a little clunky. I mean, 
one consideration is the if else part of this would seem like it's cleaner, but a lot of times when you're doing the looping process of checking something, you can't get like, it's actually just the if branch, because if this is true, then we can do something. But if it's not true, we actually need to keep moving on to look at the next option. Um, I'm also curious about the mapping because it just feels like that's a better way to do it um, without having to shovel. So I'm going to put this to the side for now and think about the mapping. First of all, does map with index mean anything? Because it seems like always good to put the Ruby guides. Map, yes, map, 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 map versus collect, map with index. There we go. Okay. So this is the one where I put the dot in. So I do temperatures dot map dot with index and I'll do TI. And so this time I should not need it's the final line of code in this block is going to be what I return from the block, which is what I'm going to put into this array. So this should be much more concise, right? What I'm basically getting rid of is my answer equals an empty array and my answer down here. And then I should, instead of shoveling, I should be able to kind of reproduce this. So again, I may declare N equals I plus one. And then I'll do a while loop while temperatures bracket n is less than t. Let's we'll see now this is I'm saying that differently. While n is less than temperatures dot length. So this is, I'm going to search n plus equals one and so while n is less than temperatures at length, I'm going to look and see if temperatures n is greater than t, then I can just return so this is the explicit return, n minus i, n. If I do that whole thing and I don't find that, then I can just end with zero because that's the implicit return, the end of my block. So this will be the return if I don't ever hit this, if I, this statement is never true. Good, good, glad. Um, output zero. That's interesting. Um, map dot with index. So I guess I'm confused about map dot with index, which means I want to open up my IRB terminal and investigate because I want to learn more about what I don't understand. Uh, I may not have a terminal open. Let me see here. There we go. Okay. RB. I'm going to go ahead and share my terminal. Am I sharing my terminal? What's that? There we go. Okay, that feels better. 
Okay. So, oh, sorry. All right. So I just want to create a little sample temperatures. equals, I can just actually steal from this one. And then I'm going to run this code because I'm really expecting this to return an array, but it kind of looks like it's returning. Oh. I mean, is map of index map with index Ruby? Let's go to actual documentation, class array. I know collect is the same as map, map with index. Yeah. Should return an array. Okay. I mean, maybe there's something wrong with the structure of my code. So let me just write something more simple. Temperatures dot map dot with index and we'll do a very basic temperature and index and we'll say we're basically returning something like that. That works. Oh, okay. I mean, it didn't really. Um, hash equals loop. Temperatures dot map dot with index. Ti. And then I'm going to do hash bracket i equals t and then so that returns the t value because the return of an assignment line is the thing you assigned it to but the point is that hash now has everything i want okay all right so what am i missing about this If the temperatures n is greater than T, this gave me an unexpected return. Maybe didn't like my explicit return here. It says line three. could be yeah, I don't know <clears throat> okay so at this point I've got to kind of stop my rabbit hole and kind of pull my yank myself back in and say all right I gotta I gotta rethink what I'm doing because I'm not really making progress on this other one. So now I've already answered the problem. So that's nice that I was able to get through it. I'm just trying to do it with map with index. What about a more clunky way of like what to, well, let's just call it result equal to zero. And then I can put result at the end of my loop here. So then instead of saying that, I can say result equals n minus i and the break here. And that way we'll stop looping. The last line will be result, which means we'll, we should put that into our array. Let's see if this works. Oh boy, all over the place. Some of them are right. No, almost all of them are wrong. The last two were good. 
<laughs> All right. Well, let's try to figure out why it went wrong. Um, so basically, when T was 73 and I was zero, this means N is one, result is zero, while one is less than temperatures at length. That's true. If temperatures one is greater than T, then the result is N minus one, and we break. Breaking should take me here. I wonder if break, does it break me out of the if or out of this? I mean, it worked up here, right? When I broke inside the if branch, because I think break is to stop the looping. <clears throat> I guess it's interesting that I would expect, oh, it's N minus one. Aha, there it is. N minus I. All right, here we go. Let's try again. There we go. Okay, cleaner. Still don't know that I'm going to be able to get this to be um, like cleaned up to one line, but I think I've I think I've kind of accomplished what I set to accomplish. Okay, well, I don't know how that's useful. Um, used a little documentation, did some pseudo coding. Um, you know, showed some examples of having to kind of work through things in your head, trying to talk out loud, um, solved something kind of a more basic way using the most basic iteration, which is each, and then the more complicated way with map. Um, so yeah, hope that helped you in some way. Think about live coding and problem solving. We'll see you next time.